there are certain combination of pieces that can have a little effect on the game. Two bishops complement each other perfectly, no matter how hard they try. One operates on the light square, the other on the dark. Deadly bishops. E4. C5. The feared and famous Sicilian defense. A favorite of most of the world's strongest player. NF3. E6. D4. Pawn takes D4. Knight takes D4. A6. The Khan variation. Knight C3. Queen C7. It is a unusual to bring the queen out so early, but the queen is safe behind the first three ranks, and it controls important square all over the board. Bishop e2, b5. As we shall see, this pawn plays a crucial role in the game. Later on, it advances again to attack white's knight, and in the short term, black's bishop comes to an excellent square. Pawn f4, bishop b7, the bishop moves to a great diagonal, pressuring white's center. Bishop f3, knight c6, knight takes c6, bishop takes c6. There was a previous game before bishop e3, which was played on the year 1988 between Hard and Inhorn. It's good to keep the diagonal of the bishop queen. In this way, black contains pressure on the center of the board. Castling. Bishop c5 check. King h1. Pawn b4. Attacking the knight. Knight e2. Knight f6. Having punched back the white knight, Black gains time by attacking the e pawn. Knight g3. Pawn h5. Brilliant move. This is the key move of the game. The h pawn drives back white's knight, but it also used as a battering ram to strip away the pawn over from in front of white's king. Rook, e1, noble t. There's a game before, a, a previous game is pawn to e5. The black pieces win between Mitchell and Costa in the year 1995. Noble t, rook to e1, h4, attacking the knight. Knight retreat to end f1, h3, then g4. Pawn takes h3 will not help too much. White kings is still exposed and black will be able to use the h pile for the rook. So g4, queen b7. This subtle queen move is very strong. Black set up a powerful battery of pieces along the long diagonal. Knight d2. d5. Queen e2. If white had attempted to close the position with, then black would have played knight e4 threatening a lethal check on f2 so knight takes e4 bishop ah pawn takes e4 bishop e2 then pawn e3 check king g1 and bishop h1 threatening mate on g2 so, bishop f1, pawn to e2 with check, 
bishop e3, bishop takes a3 mate, will be a neat finish. Let's go back. So, if pawn takes d5, bishop takes d5, white cannot hold his position together. For instance, bishop takes d5, queen takes d5, queen e3, queen takes d3, knight takes f3, knight takes g4, when black has a one upon and still threatens a gruesome check on f2. Queen e2, pawn takes e4, knight takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop takes e4, then long castle, a simply but powerful move. Black brings the rook in the corner into the game on an open file. If Pawn moves to a3, bishop takes e4, queen takes a e4, queen takes e4 with check, then a rook takes e4, now rook d1, check, blocking with rook e1, rook takes e1, checkmate. That's why it was so important that black to bring the rook into the game by doing so he set up another mating threat and that was just too much for black's position to bear let's try bishop g2 then with this white rose in the towel but the situation was hopeless bang pawn takes g2 queen takes g2 then bishop takes g2 check a fitting finish. Black's bishop slice across the board, spreading white's king in the corner.